In this video, we want to show you how to generate DAM or in other words digital elevation model from Sendl1 images and what features we should observe to produce DAM with proper accuracy. We will also show you how to install plugins, especially Snapu unwrapping. By and large, you'll learn all the required processes to generate DAM using Sentinel one images within Snap. To get started, you need to log in to the Copernicus Open Access Hub website. Because DAM generation requires steady phenomena, it's better not to use images that include watery and vegetated areas. DAM accuracy is lower for such areas. Also, areas with high humidity have lower DAM accuracy. For this purpose, we use the images that contain dry area. We set the date of the image for the hot days of the year to prevent high humidity and rain. Then select the Sentinel-1 image, SLC and IW. Here we have a series of images, but we have to apply some conditions for these images. One of the conditions of the images is that they have to have the same imaging orbit. Another important condition for choosing an image is the baseline of the images that should not be less than 150 meters. To find the baseline of the images, we go to the baseline. Ask Alaska website. After reaching the website, select the baseline option from the search type section. To specify the baseline, you need to copy the name of the file and paste it inside the specified path. In this section, it shows all the images that have a different baseline from our selected image. Using the baseline criteria option, we can apply the filter in terms of time as well as the amount of baseline. The nearest baseline has a number of 171 meters that we selected. We save the names of the images to download them in the Copernicus website.
As you can see, the desired images were selected and because the images are offline, a request was made to activate the images. In terms of orbit, the two images are ascending. You can even check the images such as the instance that we did and choose a baseline above 150 for a period of fewer than 7 months. We are waiting for the images to be activated to download and process them. After downloading the images, we go to the Snap software. Here we check all the plugins that need to be updated if needed. In the second part, some plugins were not installed. We have to install all plugins, especially Snapper. The plugins will be installed with an internet connection. In the next step, we need to reinstall Snapu. We use the Manage External Tools section to reinstall.
Select Snapu and click Edit. In the Target Folder section, specify the desired output path. Finally, select the Download and Install option. As can be seen, Snapu was installed. We import the images into the software. Then we specify the study area. To do this, we use the S1 top split command. First, we need to specify subswath that our area is in IW1. In this section, we can select the desired bursts. The area we are considering is determined in this way. We choose VV polarization because it has lots of energy. We do the same steps for the second image too. If you have any questions about the tutorial, Ask in the comment section below the video. In the next step, we perform the apply orbit file for the images. We perform the apply orbit file for the second image too. In the next step, we will proceed to the co-registration of images. For this purpose, we use the back geocoding command. Select two images. Select the appropriate DAM.
Processing is complete. Here we perform the enhanced spectral diversity. Select the desired image. Parameters remain by default. In the next step, we will perform interferogram formation. The parameters remain by default and we run. As can be seen, a phase image has been created. The image of coherence has been also generated for our region. In the next step, we perform tops deburst. Determine the image and run. After performing the deburst, the black lines in the middle of the image disappear. To smooth the image, we perform Goldstein phase filtering. Select your image, specify the output path and run. The next steps are unwrapping, which has three steps. In the first step of unwrapping, we perform Snapu export.
we create a specific path and a new folder to save the results of this step in. Set the statistical cost mode option to topo. And for row overlap and column overlap we set the number 200. After performing the first step, we go to the second step, which is Snapu unwrapping. For the input image, we have to enter the output of the previous step. Select the phase option. We also specify the output path of this step and put it in the unwrapping folder that we have created in the previous step. This step is a bit time consuming and you have to wait a few minutes. We cut this part of the video. Here the snapoo unwrapping ends. The next step is snapoo import. In the first part, we introduce the generated phase image. In the second part, we introduce the unwrapped phase that was produced in the previous stage. Mark the third part. Specify a name as well as the output path.
In the next step, select Phase to Elevation. Here our DEM has been generated. The edges of the image have a problem that we can crop. We correct the image geometrically. And we can also call DEM SRTM by marking the DEM. We can save the final output as a Google Earth file by right-clicking on the output image.
This way, you can easily display the file inside the Google Earth. If you have any questions, ask us in the comments. Thanks for watching the video.